sleep, it is easy to assume that we're not being productive, but in fact our brains are taking care of some very important matters. And there is a new exciting line of discovery on this subject. We're joined this morning by uh, Terry Sanofsky, correct, sir? C correct. Okay, a researcher with the Salk Institute. In fact, you head up your department. And this research that you're doing, what are you learning? Well, first of all, the brain is a, uh, one of the most uh, uh, complex organs in the known universe, and sleep is a mystery. But because of the U.S. Brain Initiative, we're, we're, we're making great progress, and the discovery that we made was totally unexpected. And, and this has to do with brain waves that occur when you fall asleep. You're not aware of them, but these brain waves uh, are traveling circularly through your cortex. Cerebral cortex is on the surface, and it's important for all of your knowledge and understanding and consciousness. But when you fall asleep, these brain waves have a circular pattern that we, we call them Princess Leia waves because of <laughs> the, hair their, the, the hair bones, <laughs> right. Uh, but this is uh, totally uh, unprecedented in terms of the speed of the waves, and we think they have something to do with consolidating your experience and your memories permanent memories. And, and if they're disrupted, we know, if these waves are disrupted, we know that you have, uh, not, you're, you're not able to remember things. I was reading your report online, and, it, and the analogy I was thinking of was it was almost like we're transferring things that happened in the RAM memory and we're transferring them to the hard drive. Is that a fair analogy? It's, it's a, a good analogy. I think that, uh, you know, things that happen, uh, you're not paying attention to, you don't remember them, but things that are important for you, you want to put that into your permanent store and that, that can only be a small fraction and that is determined while you sleep. The other thing, and there's so many fascinating parts to this, but that the memories that are stored are directly related to the senses that uh, took the sensation. Uh, so a, a smell might be remembered in one part of your brain, the eyes in another part. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, the organization of the cortex uh, is, uh, is really very distributed, highly distributed. The visual part of the brain is in the back. Uh, the prefrontal cortex in the front is responsible for planning. And th the information about any experience is distributed over the entire surface of the cortex. And one of the things that we think these ra waves are very important for is integrating all that information is all over the place that uh, is, is then tied together. As you said, this happens in the unconscious. You're not aware of it. There are things that we want to remember and things that we'd rather forget. This can apply to both. Th now, this is an area that's right at the cutting edge of neuroscience, and that is uh, PTSD. Why is it that there are some things that uh, are really are, are, are jamming our, our, our memory store? Uh, and, and this is something where we think by making progress on understanding the normal activity patterns, we can then understand how it goes wrong and then help uh, veterans, for example, coming back from Iraq and, and, and Afghanistan. And what about the other side, which is people who would like to improve their memory? Now, this is something interesting. So there, there have been reports that if, uh, if you put uh, electric waves through your skull, you know, this is a little batteries attached to your skull, at the right frequency while you're sleeping, you can actually improve memory. Huh. And that, what, that, what that might mean is that we might have the potential for being able to regulate uh, the types of memories we have. And, and this is all happening because of the U.S. Brain Initiative. Like go to bed with a helmet that generates these waves or something? Well, you know, that's science fiction today, but tomorrow <laughs> it might actually be something in your home. We have to wrap, but I want to ask you a science, fi science fiction question at this time, which is how close are we getting to understand what it means, what consciousness means? Well, my colleague Francis Crick devoted the second half of his life after he figured out how life is organized in DNA, he then s turned to consciousness. And, and this is also a great mystery. Why, you know, how is it we're aware of things? But uh, there is a lot of progress being made because we can now understand we can actually have tools for being able to look at the activity that uh, is, is present in your brain when you're aware of something, visually aware, consciously. And, and, and I think it's actually a, a problem that uh, we can solve over, over the next and 10 years. And ultimately pl plays into whether we'll ever create machines that can become conscious. Th that's another problem. That's a, yeah, another, yeah, you're right. Terry Sanowski with the Salk uh, Institute, thank you so much for being here this morning. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you. And you can find the uh, report online. Just look up the Salk Institute site. Renee?